the top two tussle rocks up to East London. Chelsea looking to go back top tonight as their mammoth fight on four fronts continues. Here's Emma Hayes with Pat. Well, Emma, you've talked about loving this stage of the season. So does that mean you almost relish an occasion or a weekend like this where City have gone first, they've got their points in the bag, and now like, the pressure's on you to respond? I mean, I'd always like a little bit more of a lion on a Sunday, so... Me too. Start with that, get that right. Um, listen, these, this part of the traditions of the women's game coming to places um, like West Ham and it's a London derby in many respects, so no, I enjoy coming here. West Ham have troubled some big clubs in the last few weeks and months, including yourselves in the, uh, in the FA Cup back in January. It took you to extra time. What do they do well? What problems do they give you? Um, they're very compact. I said before, they play a 5-3-2. I think they'll try and shut off, shut us off in the deepest spaces and make it difficult. So our centre backs have got got to be good on the ball. I think you've got to draw them out. And then I think it's the importance of the stretching movement in the right moments because to be compact higher up the pitch and press high like they can do means there's spaces elsewhere. And you know if they give us the spaces, find it. If they don't give us the spaces, then move them. She's going to need those Lions because she's got a busy old time fit coming up. I feel like we say this at the end of every season because this is where Chelsea are, right? Why does she relish this time so much? Just because she's used to it? Because you're in four competitions and you have What's the potential. Yeah, like if you ask any manager at this part of the season, would you want to be in her shoes? They would all be like, absolutely. That's what you want. Any player would want to be in the opportunity to win a quadruple. Like she's, so look, they've got a stacked squad and even with the changes we, sh we showed earlier, I mean, I'm looking at the back line. Lawrence, Olympic gold medalist, Jess Carter, European Championship winner, Buchanan, easy you played with at Leon, top quality, Neve Charles. Even with the changes and Hannah Hampton is just excelling, you can make the change all you want, but that back line and the goalkeeper are solid and experienced. But she's right, it's going to be difficult because it's going to be about the attacking player trying to break down this solid West Ham team today. Yeah, Buchanan's really come into her own over the last few matches. Yeah, great timing. Um, just when her team need her to be in form and obviously you've got Natalie Bjorn coming back from that brief calf injury as well on the bench today to put a bit of pressure on Carter and Buchanan. The competition's going to arise at the right times in the areas. But just working off what Emma Hayes just said there about stretching the play and West Ham perhaps shutting off the deep spaces. I, I, that perhaps is why Aggie Beaver-Jones has been given the nod today because I think she offers more of a threat in behind mm -hmm. than perhaps Guru Wright. And of course, Guru Wright, and if this was a Champions League final, I think Guru Wright would be in that 11 for Chelsea. But she's got the tools in her squad to win every game. All right, West Ham actually took Chelsea to 120 minutes in the cup. In for the long haul, maybe not that long. Uh, Ginny Flaherty's alongside Gary Tappers. Caroline, thank you. So over to you, Chelsea. This is where Arsenal's title challenge faltered last month with a 2-1 defeat. The informed Blues arrive here knowing that that sort of result might end their own hopes of retaining their WSL crown. But their record against the Hammers is quite spectacular. 14 wins in a row in all competitions over the last four years. The champions will take some stopping here this afternoon as they chase the quadruple. Don't forget, it's already the third meeting between the sides this season the other two at Kings Meadow Chelsea winning 2-0 in the league in October and then that FA Cup fourth round tie which went to extra time before Chelsea got through by three goals to one we'll start with a look at the teams for you it's nine defeats out of nine for Ian Skinner against today's opponents just one clean sheet this season for goalkeeper Mackenzie Arnold. That was in week two of the season. One change in defence with a new Denton replacing Howard Sissoko, who was substituted after 58 minutes against Liverpool. The midfield is unchanged. Teresa Shimasu has played every minute in the WSL this season. Viviana Say makes her 50th West Ham appearance. Jess Yu comes in for Emma Snurler. So two changes from the Liverpool defeat, Sissoko and Snurler are both named as substitutes. Emma Hayes goes with this starting 11, three changes from the Ajax win. Anna Hampton has never kept a clean sheet against West Ham, this is her ninth attempt. Ashley Lawrence makes her first start since returning from the Gold Cup with Canada, she replaces Ev Parise. There are starts for Jelena Czankovic and Aggie Beaver-Jones in midfield for the latter, just the second league start of the season. 
but no change in attack. This all-new lethal partnership has been deadly for the last two games. Natalie Bjorn and also Myra Ramirez are both back on the bench after missing the last two with injuries. Well, Jilly's alongside me. You represented both of these clubs with distinction. Jilly, who are you looking forward to watching today? Uh, for me, for West Ham, Katrina Gorey, you know, obviously we've seen it in the, in the preview. Since her debut, she ranks first in everything without a touch, chance created, the ball carries, possession won. And I just think in that central midfield area, she has to dominate today. She has to get her foot stuck in. She has to break up the play. So, yeah, I'll be really keen to see how well she does today in there. And then for, for me, for Chelsea, Niskin, this partnership has been formed with her and Lauren James. Obviously, we see it midweek. We saw it against Arsenal as well. The link-up play, the opposite movements that they do, Lauren James was very, very dangerous alongside her, so it'd be great to see how they, them two work today as well. Well, another reminder about that FA Cup tie in January. It is another reminder that Chelsea can't take anything for granted here when it went all the way to extra time. We welcome viewers from Sky Sports main event and Sky Sports football here to the Chigwell Construction Stadium. Chelsea bidding to respond to Manchester City's victory yesterday in the derby. I think it's fair to say both Emma Hayes and Gareth Taylor probably expecting both teams to win every game from here on in. It really is going to be incredibly close in this title run-in. So we're good to go here. Players take a knee ahead of kickoff as the fight against all forms of discrimination in our sport continues. So it'll be West Ham United to get the ball rolling here. Manchester City got the job done yesterday with their comfortable win in the derby. Now Chelsea bid to follow suit. And you have to say, they are looking in unstoppable mood right now. 15 wins from the last 16 in all competitions. West Ham with the first attack. Oh, and that's attacked by Assay. A wonderful cross on this right-hand side and a chance for Assay inside 20 seconds. What a start that is by West Ham. Nice, good build, patient build-up. Iweki spins out into the channel, has a little look up. I say completely unmarked. I mean, that's not good enough from, from Jess Carter or Ashley Lawrence there. She's able just to sit in between both of them. And I think she'll feel disappointed really, that she's not actually hit the target. Well, that would have been some way to mark a half century of West Ham appearances, wouldn't it? And she did open the scoring in that FA Cup tie in the first half back in January. Is Nuskin trying to slide it through to Lauren James? Could be a chance straight away for Beaver Jones. It's brilliant! What a wonderful goal from Chelsea! Nuskin and Lauren James, of course, involved. But what about that for a finish from Aggie Beaver Jones? Spectacular! And then the opposite movements that we talked about as well. Nuskin, even though she's playing a little bit higher up, she gets drawn right out. Sure where she is, able to turn great through through there to, to Lauren Jones. Maggie Booth Jones just comes in off the line. Denton can't stay with her, and it's a fantastic finish. Chris movement from Chelsea. What a dynamite opening 90 seconds here. West Ham with a chance straight from the kickoff, and then with their first attack, Chelsea take the lead. Bieber Jones, who has been pushing, hasn't she, for more starts in the WSL? Well, she's taken that opportunity straight away. And as a result of that, if it stays this way, Chelsea go back top ahead of Manchester City. It's also just a gentle reminder, Gary, that when you do get your chances against the top opposition, you have to take them because. Potentially that could have been 1-0 and that tap might not have happened from Chelsea. Well, a chance.
chance straight away for West Ham to respond here. Short corner. Played in by Zhu. And uh, behind it goes for a goal kick. Well, who knows, Jelly, it may come down to goal difference, mightn't it? Both clubs surely expecting the other to win all their games. And I heard City's Esme Morgan say yesterday the margins are crazy at the moment. So it's about getting goals. It's great for us. It is. It is great, obviously, for our goal so early on in this game. And you do worry if, if Chelsea are potentially in that mood. You know, what the scoreline could end up being if, if West Ham don't stay switched on and don't defend a little bit better. Blues picked up some very big wins, didn't they, in last season's run in. We might need to do the same this year. Only once has it gone down to goal difference. That was a decade ago when Liverpool won it. Free kick to Chelsea here. Emma Hayes was worried about the West Ham low block. When you score early, it just changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah, because I think if we've seen Arsenal when they, they come up against that block, they really, really struggled to, to break West Ham down. And the longer the game got on, they got more and more frustrated. So an early goal will settle. I say settle any of those nerves. I'm not too sure Chelsea have those nerves. Lauren James over the ball, having got the assist for the Peter Jones goal. Going for goal herself here. She has to just touch that around, Mackenzie Arnold. It's a great position for James to take up. You can see what she's trying to do, get it over the wall, into the bottom corner, but Mackenzie Arnold does well to get across. So an all-action opening five minutes here. Chelsea's corner. Easily cleared on the near post this time. The chase is on here for Gory. Pressure on in there. Great timely for Zou here to get it through. And all the way to the far post. Oh, what a chance! She couldn't put it away. Kirsty Smith with the goal mouth yawning. What a chance to equalise. Uh, well, realistically, now West Ham, they should have been putting two goals away. And they do really good link up play. They keep battling down the right hand side. Just through there, ball across. Poor defending from Chelsea because once again they're unaware of where the players are in the box. But Kirsty Smith has to be hitting the target. She has to be putting that away. Well, just the one West Ham goal so far came uh, at Brighton in October. But she should have doubled her tally there for sure. She won't need us to tell her. We don't get too many chances like that against Chelsea. That's why you have to be, be clinical when you do get your chances, because you, know, you probably don't expect to get two chances so early on against Chelsea. There's Neve Charles. Oh, this is the size of the task facing. West Ham, look at that, this season, that's extraordinary on its own, 12 wins out of 12 after scoring first, but if you go back further to September 2022, they've won 29 out of 31, no defeats, Eva Jones again, brilliantly done, now Lauren James, I don't want to give her too many chances, and it's quite good for us as well, because we're getting a lot of action, Dan, is this wide area in front of us here, but Aggie Beaver Jones getting far too much time and space to be able to do what she wants. West Ham don't close it down quick enough. And then Lauren James has allowed the time really to just do what she wants with the ball. You can see exactly what she's trying to do, she's trying to curl it into the top corner at the far post. She did score here uh, last year. Lauren James in a big win. 7 0. League Cup semi final. And of course, she's in. Such spectacular form, 12 goals in her last nine WSL appearances. It's a foul on Uweki by Nicky Beaver Jones.
sometimes we talk about quiet starts, keeping it tight for the opening 20 minutes. That does not apply here. We don't want that though, do we? We want goals, we want excitement. We want it to be lively. Fun time in the springtime sunshine here. Terrific start to the game. Felicia Buchanan with the back pass. A couple of absolutely outstanding performances from her since returning from the Gold Cup. Back to the semi-final with Canada against the uh, USA. So Renna Hayes described her performance in midweek as uh, amazing. Definitely a player for the big occasion. Down went uh, Amber Tiziak. A little shot from Lauren Jones, but uh, it was something and nothing. Jones is trying to get James <laughs> booked early on, but yeah, there's nothing in that at all. One from Hannah Hampton looking for Neve Charles. Took that brilliantly, Neve Charles. And the covering from Denton, that'll be a corner to Chelsea. Yeah, there's a great take by Charles there, and Denton does well because she just stands up. She don't dive in, she just runs Charles to the line. So it'll be Elena Chankovic, the Serbian international, to take the corner for Chelsea. I thought that was going to be a free header for Niskin. This time clear their lines, it'll be collected by Jess Carter here. The last two deliveries there just coming into the near post area and West Ham dealing really well with it when in the first contact. It's no clean sheets in 19 now for West Ham. Often chasing the game. Uh, chasing the game against Chelsea is tiring. Gori. Adewaki, away by Buchanan. Directed here by Zhu. What away from Nuskin. Now Zadorski. Good by Smith, who I'm sure is still running that opportunity in her mind. Shimizu playing at centre back with uh, Denton as right wing back. That's certainly how they were playing in the warm up. We wondered if it was just a ploy. And obviously Sissoko not playing. You know, obviously her coming out, Shimizu coming into the right side centre back. You see Skinner did say there was the reasons behind it. There is his uh, Shimizu. Corey. Forward by Zadorski. It's away by Jess Carter. And so just watching West Ham, they're really going to try and come down the right hand side. I think with Denton pushing high. And then they like, they know that Charles likes to bomb forward and leaves a lot of space there. Oh, this is dangerous. And suddenly Beaver Jones is through the middle, one on one. It's a heavy touch, and that allowed Mackenzie Arnold to make a terrific smothering stop. Could easily have been two. And I, and I think the problem there is because Denton's so high, you know, there's, we've basically got three in the back, two in the back. Shimizu's left that number really on the outside here with Beaver Jones, but Arnold just does enough to make herself big. She commits to it. She stands her ground and does really well there. Oh, that's a captain's contribution, isn't it, from Mackenzie Arnold? 
like a few players, she's got a 100% record against Chelsea, lost 8 out of 8. Well, there's no shame in that. It applies to quite a few of these players. Pressing high here. Mayashi backing herself to get out of a tight spot and done terrifically well. Jankovic couldn't win it back either. Uweki. Shimizu. On for Denton. Why not put it in early? Could be a chance here for Hayashi! Offside. Well, that was a brilliant move from West Ham, and they're unlucky, but the goal won't stand. I was just about to say, what brilliant football from, from West Ham there. The penalty should build up from moving it from left side to right side. She's on she's on side for me. She's, she's clearly on side there. I think it's, it's Lawrence who's playing her on. So I, West Ham should feel hard done by there, because for me, on that picture there, where it's held still, Lawrence is playing her on. Well, they're very fortunate, Chelsea. That was a quality move from the Hammers. And Ryan Skinner will be devastated when she sees those pictures again. Chances West Ham have created in the opening quarter of an hour. We will uh, certainly get confidence from that. Jankovic trying to release Rich and counter it, and Mackenzie Arnold again. We're at the danger very early. Are you looking at that? Okay, that one was offside. But if that wasn't offside, which because she wasn't, and they take their other two, I should be looking at West Ham being 3 1 up here against Chelsea. And that's the, the, the fine margins, really, realistically, when you come up against a side like this. There we go. They actually shaded possession, they have the same number of shots. The home record for Rianne Skinner's side, it's been disappointing this season. They've only won five points here, all campaign, compared to seven away. Of course, a lot of the teams playing at the club's main stadium on Women's Football Weekend. West Ham not doing that, but Rianne Skinner did say it is a priority for the club. It's not uh, covered in West Ham's lease agreement with the London Stadium, so they would have to pay extra. You played there, though, didn't you, in the one game they did play against Tottenham, Jimmy? Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Gary, there. Yes, we lost. But for me, listen, I've, I've been a supporter of it since that game, that West Ham should be playing at the, main, at the main stadium. They should have games there. I know, obviously, the technicalities or whatever, but for me, they're the only club who's not played there in the last four or five years. It's, it's ridiculous. Yep, certainly the only club in the WSL this season. Equally, they are trying to build the following here, and the ticket sales have been brilliant here in Dagenham. Three kicks given here. I think the referee tried to play an advantage. Henry Poles with the challenge here. Yeah, I think the initial... It's, it's, I'm not too sure if she's, where she's pulling it back to. Obviously, there's a tackle on Gori. There's also a tackle on Nueki as well that was late. Gori just seems to be struggling a little bit. Well, this is one player that uh, Rian Skinner really won't want to lose because she's made a terrific impact since uh, signing in January. Signed on the contract to the end of the season from Vizio and so much that's been good for West Ham since January has gone through her. I wish she was there when I was at West Ham. She said she, she, said she went to sign for West Ham for a few years. She, she left it too late. Maybe she was waiting for me to, to go. And she thought, well, maybe I'll go there now. Well, we talked about just how important she has been for West Ham, and that tells a story, doesn't it, Jilly? It's hugely impressive. Yeah, because it's not just defensively you know I think when, when she come in I think people were saying potentially just going to be more like the, the holding midfielder to break play up but she's top with chances created she's a box to box you know she's, she's a great player I think I watched her in the World Cup for Australia she dominated there she's a little live wire in there but she does the work defensively but she also brings so much attacking as well 
More than 100 caps for Australia, by the way. Well, it's hard to believe there has only been one goal in this game so far, but it's certainly worth another look. This is quality, isn't it? Yeah, and it's the interchange and movement as well. Nuskin coming out, James taking the space and the run, then Beaver Jones coming inside. You know, and that, that's what Chelsea have, is they're fluid, they're that movement, they're not restricted and, and they have that structure of, no, you stay there, you stay there. And West Ham just unfortunately switched off. Best scoring season of her career. Hitting her eighth of the campaign. Only managed one in the last 11 before today, but took that opportunity beautifully. Well, they are going to have to take Gory off, which is a huge blow for West Ham. It's a, it's a, it's a big blow because she offers so much to them. You know, she's everything I've just said about her then. Obviously, I don't need to repeat it, but she was just dictating play in there so far in the first 17 minutes or so. I think it'll be the Swede, uh, Marika bergman London to replace her. Meanwhile, West Ham do have the free kick to be taken here by Kirsty Smith. Hampton with an easy take. Yeah, I think I'd like to say I think she was aiming it to the players that were coming in at the back post, but just hits it too straight, straight down the front of Hannah Hampton. I'm sure you'd be ranting to yourself as you were running back to a defensive position after that. Which I said, I don't like running, Gary. <laughs> I've done it many a time when I was going up for corners and they went short and didn't put the ball in. I was fuming. <laughs> Chelsea have it with uh, Chankovic. Square ball by Lopez to Charles. Now Beaver Jones saw that well. And Nick Denton. Still want to make this change, uh, West Ham. Carter. Now Buchanan. James. Give and go with Beaver Jones. Aaron James still going through the Niskan. Couldn't quite pick out Jankovic. Once again, they just moved up a gear there, Chelsea. And so, so dangerous. It's just so important for West Ham that they track their runners. Once the ball's gone, don't just watch the ball because you've got James coming off. Niskan, Beaver Jones are coming off the back shoulders. So Bergman London on as a sub for the fifth WSL game in a row. Another one who joined the club in January from Hacken. Lopez. Lovely turn away from Zoo. Viva Jones. Lopez. Just over new skin. Sadorsky just got a little touch on that behind for a corner. West Ham doing a little bit better dealing with it. They just need to get out just a little bit quicker to the ball. Don't allow the Chelsea players to set themselves up and put the ball into the box. Squeeze the line up and the players behind have to squeeze the line up as well. Third corner for Chelsea. Big header away there from Tiziak. Lawrence. Carter. Last hand deep here. Chelsea looking to exploit that. Charles just can't quite get on the end of it. West Ham doing better again in the sense of uh, closing down the pressure. It's those third player runs though, it's the runs that come off the back of, of West Ham shoulders. Unfortunately there that could need Charles, the ball just overrun a little bit. Midway through, a very entertaining first half. West Ham have more than played their part in that. Should be 
absolutely devastated to be behind here for sure and Skinner because they don't deserve to be no, they don't deserve to be they, I mean they, they, in, in all fairness the chance they've had they deserve to be winning here but they at least should be drawing the goal should the goal was on side for me Chelsea shape when they're out of possession. Two banks of four, and then Lauren James and Niskan up top. If Lauren James doesn't stay there, she's very difficult to pick up. Locals. You can it. Charles, another one whose form has been dazzling in recent weeks. Eva Jones, Zhu has pinched it. Denton, Charles with the interception. Now Lauren James. Lawrence. It's in Canarid. Ashi to Smith. Lawrence will tidy up here. Chelsea team who conceded just two goals in their last 11 games in all competitions. Do you get those chances against them? You have to put them away. And you also need the officials to spot that it's onside instead of off. They've been very unfortunate there. Yeah, and I think West Ham will kick themselves because of the other two chances that they had. Charles. Viva Jones. Lauren James. Chelsea fans behind that goal, screaming shoot whenever she gets on the ball. Forward by Smith. Out by Carter. I think sometimes though that the, the problem with West Ham is that they all get behind the ball to do the defending side of it, but when they win the ball, they've got no one up there. And you've got to say he's trying to do the whole line really on her own, and then you're just giving the ball back to Chelsea. West Ham done better when they kept the ball, they kept possession, and then they was able to sort of stretch themselves out and build themselves back up again. Buchanan to Neve Charles. James. No skin. Neva James speaking to it this time. It will be a throw to the Hammers. So it's really good from Chelsea because you've got No skin, James, and Beaver Jones, who are planners like a little free with their minute changing. Well, we've got to tell you that the later game between Villa and Arsenal has been delayed. That's due to travel disruption for the away side. So the new kickoff is at 7.30. It'll still be live for you on Sky Sports Premier League. These poor Arsenal players can't catch a break this week. Lawrence. Jankovic. Beaver Jones just trying to, I beg your pardon, Liskin just trying to find Lauren Jones. Interception was by Shimizu. Lawrence is first to this ball. Oh, 
Chelsea fans away to our left hand side really want the second goal. Buchanan trying to set Beaver Jones away. Terrific ball that was over the top. Lauren James. Just like deja vu of all the chances that are coming down this left hand side with Beaver Jones and Lauren James picking up the spare ball on the edge of the box. Completely unmarked, you know, no one's tracking her, whether they're, they're trying to track her or not, they can't get nowhere near her. And she's just able to pick it up, completely unmarked. Chankovic. Charles, Beaver Jones really enjoying herself in this first half. Lovely give and go with Ch once again. Fortunately for her, the cross was straight to Mackenzie Arnold, but again, lovely one and two touch football from Chelsea. It's, it's, a, it's another uh, attack down this left hand side. Obviously, Beaver Jones, Lauren James, Beaver Jones, Nuskin are linking up so well. You know, and when West Ham are really struggling with their movement of who to take, who to pass on, where to go. Well, we're ticking towards the half hour mark, and West Ham hanging on in there and a threat themselves. So I see you trying to. Make something happen for West Ham. What a chance inside the opening 30 seconds here. Just West Ham just need to go back to what they were doing at the start of this first half with the ball. Comfortable possession. Be brave on it. Move it from left to right. Try and frustrate Chelsea a little bit. Pressure comes you cleared by Hannah Hampton up to Beaver Jones. Newskin will chase, but Beaver Jones is offside. Now, if you do want a podcast to listen to, I can heartily recommend this one. If you spend a lot of time in the car, as I do, three players in a podcast available on YouTube, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast from. Save battling for it, but uh, Lawrence did brilliantly in the air there. And it's just too much in far of uh, in front of Smith. Carter to Charles. Down the left again, Beaver Jones to James. No doubt about it, uh, Denton and Shimizu have got their work cut out on this side of the pitch. Shankovic. Charles has called for it. I just feel in the last 10 minutes, Jilly, they have stepped it up a bit, Chelsea, and they've got a lot more control now. Yeah, but I also think this how West Ham have, have sort of changed what they were doing so well in the first part of this first half. You know, looking after the ball, playing a bit more better possession, not giving it straight back to Chelsea, which they've done for the last few times, if not more. When they've, when, they've, when they've been on the ball. Beaver Jones. Again, good defending from Zadorski. Helped out as well there by Hayashi. Hayashi will be told to lose the pitch. You're onside. 
Should be fuming. I'm fuming for her, so I begin to think what she's going to be feeling, and, and the rest of the Western team and, and staff and that, but it's one of those ones, yes, you can be fuming, but you still had two other chances, realistically, to put the ball into the back of the net. Just saw a Mackenzie Arnold hobbling a bit there as she cleared that ball. And that is not good news for West Ham, who've already lost Katrina Gorey. Looking at that, you just wonder if she had her foot trodden on here. Yes, there by Beaver Jones. We know how sore that is. Yeah, that, that will be a sore one, but for me, Beaver Jones, she's not even looking at Mackenzie Arnold. You can see she naturally just puts her foot down to step down, and unfortunately, Arnold's foot is there. Charles. Lauren James. And Chankovic saw the opportunity. Sailed over the bar of Mackenzie Arnold into those Chelsea fans. Yeah, two West Ham fans there going for the same ball. A little bit of confusion. Ends up dropping down for Chelsea. And Chankovic nicely on the edge of the box there, but expecting her to do a little bit better with that as well. Yeah, I was slightly surprised to see she hasn't scored at all this season. Jankovic, last goal was last May, and they put six past Leicester en route to winning the title on the final day. May well come down to the final day yet again. Jankovic to Lawrence. It's in Canaret. Little give and go with Niskin. And they're calling for a goal kick here by Sam. Yes, it is. Chelsea haven't really gone down the right hand side at all in this first half. It's been mainly more on the left hand side, but it's in Canaret again. They want it. They need to get her into the game, really, because she can offer so much to Chelsea. Shankovic, Charles, Weaver Jones, Nuskin. There's no foul there. This could be a chance for West Ham with Ureki. She's gone for goal. Oh! She's clipped the top of the bar. Well, oh, that's an astonishing effort from the Japanese international, and it just kissed the top of the bar. I mean, wow, I'm holding my breath there. She does really well trapping the ball, and what she does well, she just cuts across Liverpool's as well. She knows exactly what she's doing there, and I think for me, Anna Hansen thinks she's beaten there. Very, very clever play from Ueki. Just doesn't drop quick enough for her, but for me, Anna Hansen was clearly beaten. Scored uh, last weekend, didn't she, in that defeat to Liverpool. Started uh, at West Ham in terrific fashion, scored three in her first five WSL games. They've dried up a bit since then. But just a little glimpse there of what she's all about. That was improvisation. <laughs> People might just be turning on now and seeing that scoreline. Doesn't tell the whole story, does it? By any means. In the first half of chance after chance, really, at both ends. I think West Ham could, I mean, we've said it, they'll feel hard done by it, but I think they'll take a lot of positives, make confidence that they are still in this game. Chelsea coming forward here with Ritten Canarid. She's onside. Played that behind Niskin. Really let that first half off the hook there. Niskin's won it back. Fever Jones. She's given away by Lloyd Bowles. Lecky. Is it back from 
Shinizu, who's uh, continued her run. Sadorski. Smith. Nice turn from Bernard Linden. Hayashi. Masei. Easy to knock her off the ball. She's turned away from Lloyd Bowles brilliantly. So Lawrence got it away. James. James again. Sizing up her options. She bisected the space there between Niskin and Ritten Canarit. Yeah, and I don't think West Ham will be particularly bothered about Lauren James dropping that deep. You know, just let her go. She's practically the other side of your forward line as well. Let her have the ball there. Shimizu. Looking for Uwaki. Holding off Buchanan, that's easier said than done. Denson. Shimmers it. Denson. Zew. Charles knew exactly what was happening there. She was never going to be caught ball watching, was she? Free kick. No, she does well there, Charles. Just get her body in front of Denson in between the ball and Denson, but Yumeki's doing really well as well because the ball's coming up to her and really see a lot of falls, what they'll be doing is trying to flick it on, but Asay is too far away, she's occupying really Jess Carter's back shoulder further out towards Ashley Lawrence, so she has to hold it up there, she just needs the support then from underneath. Here they come again, West Ham. Nicely played out wide by Hayashi. Say pulled out wide. Final five minutes of this first half. And Shimizu. Very much all to play for here after what's been uh, a compelling first half, really. Chelsea have ridden their luck at times. Great goal they scored, and they've had other opportunities too. This could be another chance for them. Chankovic to Ritten Kanarid. She just fell over there for the chance, and then she goes over looking for a penalty. Referee Megan Wilson has a look and shakes her head. No, I'd, say, I'd say I don't think there's a penalty for me. Up in the air by Buchanan. Shimizu. Here. Down the line for Denton. Buchanan ensures that she gets there first. Here's the goal scorer, Beaver Jones to Lauren James. Wide by Lloyd Bowles. Lawrence. Carter. Lots of possession here for Chelsea. Last time aren't too worried about that. Here's Neve Charles. 
don't think West Ham will be complaining about this. You know, I think for them it's important that they don't go in 2 0 down. Buchanan sails over the head of Lauren Jones. Well, should we have another look at this uh, penalty shout on Aggie Beaver Jones, Jilly? Yeah, I think obviously initial she she loses her footing. Yeah, for me that's soft. <laughs> that is that is very very soft there. I think obviously initially look she falls over. Denton pulls her left arm, but I wouldn't say enough to warrant the the fall. That's only in my personal opinion. I think mean, it's risky, isn't it, to pull an arm like that in the box? But I think the referee had a good view. Yeah, it's, it's very, very naive to even make contact. Oh, that's given away by the substitute Bergman Lundin. James with the cross. The header is straight to Loipols. Jankovic. That's great defending. And the player who gave it away in the first place, Bergman Lundin, looking for Uweki. Can't hear. That's some uh, typical no nonsense defending. Well, this is the big moment in the first half for the Hammers. The disallowed goal, Hayashi here, clearly onside, we think, Chile. Yeah, she's, she's onside. You can clearly see she's in front of Ashley Lawrence, she's not behind her, and I think it's unfair for West Ham that they got that ball out. Here they go again, a save with a chance, and she's blasted over. Well, doesn't that sum up West Ham United in front of goal in this first half? She had a great chance in the opening seconds of it and a great chance in the closing seconds of it. It's a good play again on Hayashi, what a fantastic ball. And she, she's, she's fighting with Jess Carr, but she has to hit the target there. Now, I don't know if it's a potentially a little bubble up before she has that strike, but you are the centre forward, you're a forward player for West Ham. You have to be doing better in that position. To four minutes of stoppage time at the end of the half. Jankovic seeking out Beaver Giants. He's offside. Well, it is incredible that that's been the only goal of this half. Only Beaver Giants inside the opening couple of minutes. Because uh, the chances that both these sides have created. We should have had more. Yeah, we, we should have had so much, so many more goals to be talking about. But I also think as well for West Ham is a it's a positive in the sense of they are creating and they're creating against Chelsea, the top side in the league, you know, and I think they have to do that then against the other teams in and around them. Another offside here. Free kick to West Ham. Ball forward and will be picked up here by Smith. Certainly a lot of life left in this game. Mentioned that FA Cup tie back in January. Chelsea found West Ham the tough nut to crack on that day. We've got the job done eventually uh, after extra time. We're going to have to work hard to seal the points here. West Ham just have to make sure they come out for the second half. Really how they started and have ended this, this first half. And take a lot of confidence from it. Hayashi. Oh, be a late free kick in this first half to West Ham. Ueki brought down. They've done really well in, in this first half, you know, and I think they're 
bit of frustration from Ritten Ganymede. Just leaves a, a foot in. Yureki tries to run away with it. here for West Ham United and uh, Chelsea got it away comfortably in the end back in by Hayashi good looking ball that initially attacked by Amber Tiziak Hayashi what a great first time Sadorski Say trying something spectacular, and uh, Lawrence was very fortunate that her face was nowhere near the boot of Viviana Say. Just there with my breath there a little bit, to be honest with you. Still, as the gets the ball in, I mean, brave from Lawrence. But yeah, held my breath on that one, Gary. Well, what a terrific first half we have seen here. Chelsea in front inside 90 seconds. Brilliant goal from Aggie Beaver Jones. But West Ham have had so many chances. They're so unlucky. Honoka Hayashi's effort wrongly ruled out for offside. An open goal missed by Kirsty Smith. So much to talk about. Half time here. West Ham United nil. Chelsea one.